Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Chris writes in and says, Tom, I have an issue. I'm a man in my early 20s. And I'm married. My wife and I were hanging out at the in-laws, drinking and having a good time. When it was time to say goodbye, we were giving hugs and whatnot. Then, um, the mom is my wife's, but the guy is just her boyfriend. That's the in-laws. We barely know this guy. Okay? So you understand the deal, right? You got uh, Chris and his wife. Chris is in his early 20s. Chris's wife's mom, they went over to what he calls the in-laws house, but it's Chris's wife's mom and her boyfriend. And the boyfriend is somebody they really don't know. Chris says, the guy, who is probably 50 or so, comes behind my wife and pats her right on the ass. Now my wife has a little junk in the trunk. She's very startled by this, but I didn't see it. I wasn't aware of it until we were in the car. Now here's what Chris wants to know. He says... Should I go back and beat the crap out of this guy? Should I tell the mom, then beat his ass? Or should I just let it go? Tom, I know it is not the normal question. As any guy knows, we have all wanted to pat, smack, and handprint someone's ass. I am sure most would think not to worry because I did not see it, but could you find me an answer anyways, please? Thanks. First, let me talk about your situation. Let me tell you about a situation I encountered. Um, the fact that uh, you're patting someone on the ass, that's a gray area. Uh, that's not like grabbing someone's breasts or anything. You know what? NFL football players pat each other on the ass. I mean, it's uh, kind of difficult. I think it's disrespectful. But it's very hard to say you were trying to cop a field. Uh, it, it's not so obvious. So I think you just have to let it go and see what he does in the future. Because believe me, pal, once you start interfering in a situation like that, if you told the mom, you told your wife's mom that uh, her boyfriend grabbed your wife's ass, she will do one of two things. She will either freak out, scream and yell at the guy and break up with him, or, and this is what you don't want to see happen, she will say she doesn't believe it and then stop talking to both of you. And that can happen. Now, if he does something in the future and it's more overt, that's different. But patting somebody on the ass is... How is that different from when Jerry Rice scores a touchdown and all the guys pat his ass? I don't know. I just think it's like kind of a disrespectful way of going, all right, babe, nice seeing you. You know, just slap her. Pat her. Whatever. Now I don't see it as sexual. Now I'm going to tell you about a situation I had. I had a girlfriend who I lived with for three and a half years. Never married, did not want to marry her, but uh, there we were living together. And uh, it was one of these deals where I was perfectly happy with things the way they were. You know, I had uh, my girlfriend, we smoked weed, we watched the ball game together. She was a cool chick, we had fun. But she was always, you know, it was never enough. It was always like, come on, honey, we got to meet other couples. we got to make friends with other couples. i got friends who, you know, we, they wanted their husbands and you know, they got to get together with us. So, I'll never forget one night, and, and understand, you know, I'm no fake on the air. You can imagine that I felt like I had a gun to my head. I felt like I was uh, walking the last mile. 
I remember one night my girlfriend arranged for this couple to come over. It turned out that the woman in the couple was like a friend of hers from work. And it was her husband who was the other part of the couple. And if you can imagine this, here is what we were going to do. We were all going to get together, smoke some weed, and then play Scrabble. Isn't that fun? Now, think about this for a second, okay? If I'm smoking weed, do I want to be playing Scrabble? No. But, of course, this is what happens when women plan an evening, you know. Oh, it'll be fun! We'll all get together and we'll smoke some weed and then we'll play Scrabble. I mean, hell, I can't spell my own name when I'm so. Now I'm supposed to play Scrabble and be hit on, uh, hitting up on a triple word score. you got to be kidding me. So, all right, so uh, this couple comes over. And immediately I'm feeling like my parents' age at this point. You know, I'm feeling like 50 years old. You know, because it, we're home and we've got the dip ready and we're waiting for this couple to come over. We got we made some Duncan Hines brownies because we've got to smoke weed. These two are coming in from the suburbs, wherever they live. They're coming in. We're all going to sit around and smoke weed, eat brownies and play Scrabble. Just kill me. You know what I'm saying? Just kill me. All right? But, uh, you know, there was like no getting out of it. So there we are. They arrive, come in, these two uh, sit down, and everybody has decided that uh, they want to sit on the floor. Because they're all stoned. Everybody smoke weed, everybody's stoned, and we sit on the floor. Playing Scrabble. Stoned. I've eaten about three pounds of Duncan Hines chocolate brownies. Bunch of chip and dip. Now I'm sitting on the floor playing Scrabble. Ugh. All right, so anyway, there we are, the four of us. Acting like we live in the suburbs. All that was missing was a little wife swapping. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was like that, you know? We're playing Scrabble on the floor. Then, um, what happens? My girlfriend at the time says, does anybody want anything? And, of course, we can't leave well enough alone. People are now ordering, like, drinks. Do you have a screwdriver? Oh, yeah. I remember that, you know? Can you get me a uh, gin and tonic? So my girlfriend, who has just... Who, uh, by the way, she spoke five languages, so of course she hit the triple word scores and she was stoned. Okay. Anyway, my girlfriend has... You know, she's just gone. And so she says, would anybody like anything? And we all put in our drink orders. Because at this point, I might as well just get pissed drunk. So, um, she gets up, and you understand, we're all sitting on the floor. She gets up. Everybody's got their legs crossed. Everybody's got their little rack with the letters on it. Everybody's playing Scrabble. She gets up, and she starts to head for the kitchen. And then, um, Mr. Mr. Friend, or the husband of the, the good friend from the office... He says, here, I'll help you. You can't carry four drinks like that. I'll help you. And he goes out to the kitchen to help her while my girlfriend's best friend and I are sitting there continuing to muse over how you use a Q, a Z, and an X in the same word. Things like that. All those important things you do while you're playing Scrabble. So anyway, there we are. We're sitting there playing Scrabble. And um, I notice, uh, you know... When people make a drink, there are certain noises you hear, okay? You hear um, the ice making noise, either in a bucket or if you bought a bag of ice from the supermarket, you hear somebody reaching in and the bag is crinkling and the ice is coming out. Or you feel, um, or you hear the uh, sound of glasses 
you know, plopping down on the counter and the ice going into the glass and st- sounds of stirring and the ice is clinking. and Well, I'm not hearing any of that. At all. So, um, after I passed my turn, because I had this combination of letters that was just indecipherable, uh, I, I passed, and I let the other person, uh, my girlfriend's best friend, I let her go. And I said, just show me what you did when I come back, okay? So I get up and leave, and I head to the kitchen. And there, in the kitchen, I find my girlfriend pushed up against the refrigerator with this guy laying a big wet one on her. And I might say, my girlfriend was pushing him off. But he'd had enough weed and enough booze and enough brownies or whatever, he has sugar rush or whatever, he was coming in for the kill. This was the husband of her best friend. He's all over her in the kitchen. All right? He sees me, and he beats a hasty retreat to the living room, and now it's just me and my girlfriend in shock. In shock! So now, here we are alone in the kitchen, and we had to have the following conversation. What do we do now? By the way, I was no longer stoned. I was, like, bolt upright at this point. What do we do now? What do you do in a situation like that? Uh, Clarice, can you come to the kitchen for a minute? We're going to talk to you for a minute. What do you do? Like, call her into the kitchen and say, hey. You know what your husband just did to my girlfriend? Tell her! Tell her! Tell your best friend what her husband just did. You know, in my head, that's one of the possibilities. But, you know what? I I, I feel funny about that. I, like, you know what? I just wanted the whole night to end, and I didn't want to make it any worse than it already was. I could have gone in the other room and beat the crap out of the guy. I could have done that. But it's a litigious society, and you know what happens when you punch a guy in the face and sues you for $7 million, even though he had his uh, hands all over your girlfriend's very large breasts. So what we did was we agreed that even though both of us were in complete shock and completely freaked out, We agreed that we would say nothing about it, and we would try to wind down the evening quickly, and not only did we wind down the evening quickly, but um, once we said goodnight, that was the last time we invited those two over. And my guess is, I don't remember his name, but her name was Clarice, I remember this. I remember... Clarice was always calling after that and saying, we should get together again, that was so much fun. It's like, (laughs) we just have to keep saying no. You have to wonder how often this happens. You know, like, like in this case, right? Chick keeps calling, going, come on, we had so much fun, we got to get together again. It's like, nah, you know what, we'll call you. You know, we've been so busy lately. And you just keep coming up with excuses because you don't want to say to her, well, Clarice, we'd be happy to have you two over again if your husband wouldn't so start attacking my girlfriend. I, have you ever been in this situation? And how did you handle it? Did you beat the crap out of the guy? Did you say nothing about it? Did you do what I did? You just decided you can't socialize with these people anymore because they're too screwed up? Do tell. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Boy, it's great to talk to you, man. You're like therapy for me. Thank you. It's the Tom Like a Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Evan, you're on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Tom. Um, Hi, Evan. Same exact scenario. My best friend from childhood. We had a nice evening over at my boyfriend's in my house, and um, her husband came in and basically grabbed me from behind, pulled me around, and started feeling me and kissing me. You were alone? No, I just went to the kitchen to get the food going. Oh, the same exact thing. Yeah. And um, 
I'm basically trying to push him away, and at that point, my boyfriend walked in, took one look, saw what was happening, turned and walked away. Clearly really? He didn't want to deal with the situation. He didn't want to deal with it? No. And that was the last time we saw each other. But then this guy, they're married, right? This guy was calling me on my cell phone. My wife doesn't understand me. Oh, my I'd God. really like to get alone with you sometime. It was, and this went on for three or four months, and as a result of that, she's called me probably a dozen times since to get together. We had so much fun. Let's, let's, let's get together and have an evening. It's a, the identical situation, but I can't bring myself to do it. I, I don't even want to be around him. Wow, 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 wow. I think it's probably fairly typical until, you know, you're married. I think it probably happens more. Most women, by the time they're 30 or so, are pretty good at dealing with situations like this because some men just don't care. You know, they think you're you're an object and you're there for... I wonder, years. though, how many people um, have friends who stop coming over. Oh, Tom, I think it's probably really common. Because I've talked to other, you know, just girls at work. I've, I've heard this story a lot. And, you know, it starts with your little girl and family members, you know, the, the perverted uncle and your disturbed cousin. And, you know, there's always a cast of characters throughout a pretty woman's life that have taken liberties with you. And But when it's your best friend's husband, it's it's a whole different ball game. And, it's I mean, I can't bring myself to tell Aaron that, that this has happened, and yet... And it's your best friend. You can't oh, yeah. tell your best friend. Yeah. yeah. And I just make, keep making... It's, just, it's so weird because it's the, the identical thing. I feel so badly. At some point, I'm probably going to have to say, it's just not comfortable. There was an event that occurred, and then if she wants to pursue it and ask, I might go for it. But it's hard because I love her. But he's, he's an idiot. And the thing is, you know that if he's done it with you, he's done it with other women too it's, oh no doubt sick. no doubt and yeah. there's your best friend and you can't tell your best friend yeah what kind of guy she's married to right right that's a job nobody wants yeah my guess is Fernanda probably has had this happen if she's being totally honest with you I'm sure she's had this happen at least once in her life I'll have to ask her yeah and you just kind of develop I mean I'm a pretty girl you just kind of develop kind of a savoir faire attitude about it okay it happens you know and you deal with yeah, but it's so one much. thing when a guy comes on to you or tries to corner you outside the bathroom at a club. But when it's like the husband of your best friend, outrageous. The Tom Likas Show. Likas on Hot Talk. Tom Like His Show. From Los Angeles to 1 800 5800. Tom, that's our telephone number. This all started off with a uh, an email from a guy who was concerned that the boyfriend of his wife's mom patted his wife on the ass. And he wanted to know what to do about that. Should he beat the crap out of the guy? Should he tell the mom? Should he say nothing? Just let it go? And. We started with that, and now that's uh, all what we're talking about here. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, Philip on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how are you doing, Tom? Hi, Philip. Great, great story. I had the exact same situation, but what I did was I just said, "Hey," right when I went in there and I saw what was happening, I said, "Hey, whoa, whoa!" Called the chick. I go, "Check this out." I went off. I said, "I didn't care." I go, "This is not right." It, that kind of stuff shouldn't happen. I was not about to let him get away with it. I went up to his face and said, hey, listen, you get your ass out of here. You take your Pictionary, your picture. We have to be a plain Pictionary. Pictionary. Oh, yeah, another another nice suburban evening sitting there playing a board game with everybody. Yeah. I was the only one stoned, <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing, thank God. Yeah. But, you know, so I walk in, and this guy's doing this, and I said, I went, hey, what the heck? Did, and she goes, what? Why? But this guy, he started, no, I didn't do it. And then he finally confessed. And uh, I told him, you should get out of here or else I'm going to bust your skull. You know, I had a nice <laughs> Easton in the bedroom, right? I was going to break the Easton out. Yes. Take a swing at him. Like, <laughs> you know, but i, I got to maintain my composure. to want to, like you said, I can get sued for millions of dollars, you know, just to crack a guy in the head, you know. Right. But uh, it, it, was a, it was a great scene for me. I felt great after that. I bet you did. 
Yeah, you get to let it all out, you know, and who cares, you know? I don't want to deal with that. The next day, never heard from them. It's over. Who cares? Man, Ooh. oh, man. All right, well, Philip, thank you. Let me get uh, Sean in here. Sean, you're on the Tom Liker Show. How to... What's going on, Tom? Not much, Sean. Oh, man, I got the best one for you. Same crap happened to me about a year ago. I uh, invite a girl over for my buddy's permission, you know, kind of. He's like, hey, invite this girl over. He should rub one out for you since my sister-in-law is busy, you know. She brought this little lipstick lesbian girl over, so there was no play for me that night. And uh, push comes to shove, a little bit of alcohol going on, you know. And uh, we're having a good time, and I'm sitting out front with this girl. My girl disappears that I took to the party. I'm looking for my buddy, and uh, next minute I know, I'm like, you know what, I'll be right back. Walk around the corner into his kitchen, and boom, there they are on the floor just going at it. Oh, my God. They were going at it? Oh, they're going at it. Just so your girlfriend wasn't trying to push him off or anything? Oh, this wasn't even my girlfriend. Just the girl that, you know, oh. for the night. And heck no, man. They had each other hand in hand. And, uh, you know, I'm looking around, and I was like, God, where's this guy's wife at? Well, she already passed out drunk in her bedroom. Oh. And I'm just laughing, you know. It could have been anybody else walking in there. But, uh, you know, I waited for them to finish up. Took about a whole total of 60 seconds. I'm sitting there laughing. He turns around, looks up. She looks at me. She drops her jaw to the ground. He's like, oh, bro, I'm sorry. I was like, you know, I'm not even worried about it with you. I I wouldn't expect anything less, you know. And uh, I look at her, and I'm like, as far as you, you know, you better do something quick to get out of here. There's a couple girls outside that don't even like her. Uh And, uh, man, it's big trouble. I'm still friends with the guy, but it's about uh, six months. He still kept sneaking around with this girl. His wife found out about two days after it happened. They wanted to invite the girl back over for another little party, you know. But, uh, oh, terrible. Still friends with the guy today. Don't trust him as much. You know, we get we get to go out and hang out, you know, once every three months. But uh, we still laugh about the whole thing that happened. Wow, wow, wow. Sean, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. John on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, John. This is about eight years ago. I married to my, uh, well, it's my wife now. Back then she was my girlfriend. We uh, got a new place, and she invited her sister and then boyfriend over to the place to check it out and have dinner and some drinks. And her sister is smoking hot. So they come over. We have dinner have a few drinks. The sister excuses herself to go to the bathroom. A few minutes pass. I end up excusing myself to go use the other restroom. On my way down the hallway, she opens the door and pulls me in the bathroom. Tells me how much she wants me. We end up going at it in the bathroom and having a quickie. As we're finishing up, pulling up our pants, <laughs> my wife, well, girlfriend then, starts speaking on the door. I open up the door. She wants to know what's going on. I tell her, just after her sister leaves the bathroom, I tell her she has attacked me. It was all over me. My wife believes me. She hasn't spoken to her sister in eight years since then. Wow. And let me tell you, though, it was the best quickie I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I have the sister tried to talk to you since then? You know what she has, and my wife has never mentioned it, never brought it up to her, so her sister isn't quite sure what the deal is, but... She's had this grudge with her sister for eight years. I've never obviously... Was told her sister at your wedding? Huh? Was her sister at your wedding? Yeah, she was a, she was a bridesmaid. <laughs> but they weren't talking? Huh? No, they weren't. But she still came to the wedding. Oh, man. It's kind of awkward, but let me tell you, man, she was smoking hot. I couldn't pass it up. So it was worth it. It was totally worth it. What am I going to do? You know, I couldn't tell the truth. What am I going to do? Huh? What am I going to do, for God's sake? <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. The Tom Like It Show. Tom. Oh yeah, the Tom Like It Show. Jeremy, hello. Hey, how's it going? Tom? Hi, Jeremy. What up? Hey, uh, here's, here's my story. About uh, eight months ago, group of. Uh, Guys and gals, I go out to the bar drinking, come back to my buddy's house, got my girlfriend laying on my buddy's couch, uh, pretty drunk, not too drunk, uh, anyways, two, two of my other friends go into the bedroom, and my, my buddy was like, hey, why don't you go see if, what they're doing, man, go see if they're having sex, so, I'm kind of thinking, you know, why the hell is he asking me to go see if they're having sex, you know, why he stays out with my girlfriend, so I walk around the corner, 
stop and I peek back around to see, you know, if he's going to try and put the move on my girlfriend. Well, while she's laying on the couch, he's uh, slowly trying to uh, move his hand up her skirt. And, I mean, as soon as I seen that, I kind of walked back. I walked in there, and he stopped. He jumped up. You know, he's like, wait, what's going on, man? And, you know, it just pisses me off because, you know, it's eight months later, and I still think about, you know, what would happen if I went to walk back around the corner and see what he was doing, you know? Mm-hmm. What if I would have let it go a little bit longer, see how it played out, you know? Uh, you wish you had, huh? I wish I had because now it's like, I don't, whenever we go, we still hang out and stuff, but, you know, I just don't let myself get real drunk because I don't want him to, you know, my girlfriend be in one room and him be in that same room and me be outside doing something, you know? And what about your girlfriend? Uh, uh she was, she kind of said she didn't know what was going on. She was like, I was drunk. I didn't know what was going on. I was, you know, that kind yeah, of well, that's, that's what we all say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you trust her? Uh, Yes and no. I mean, I wish I could trust her more, but, you know, there's some, uh, just, I just don't trust, you know. I don't know what it is. I mean, we, we, now you don't even trust her. Yeah, not, not, I mean, I trust her, but when it comes to stuff like this, I. Well, this is kind of what trust is all about. I mean. Oh, yeah. uh, What else do you trust her with? I mean, this is the most important thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I don't trust her because, you know, whenever she goes out places, you know, I'd, kind of throw a fit and I don't let her go anywhere unless I'm with her because, you know, I don't want something happening. You know, we got a three-year-old son together and stuff, so it's kind of... Why'd you do that? Oh, uh, I have no idea. In other words, being she drunk, did it. Being stupid, she there did do it, actually. I found out not too long ago that she wanted to get pregnant. And, and she didn't tell you. And she didn't tell me, no. Strike two. That's right. So I don't know what to do. I mean, it's either stick with it and wait till uh, my kid's 18 and get out the door, or uh, you know what I would say. Yeah, I know what you would say. DTV. That's right. All right. Anyways, that, that's my gig, and I I don't know what the hell to do. So either uh, I'm just gonna put up with it, or I'm gonna tell the bitch to get out. <laughs> Jump that bitch. That's right. Hey, why don't you take me out with a bong hit and uh, saw him getting kicked in the ass. All right, Jeremy, here you go. one 800 5800 tom is our telephone number. Jason, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing? All right. Uh, my girlfriend... My actually, it's my sister's husband came over one night. We we're all hanging out, partying. My girlfriend gets tired. She had to work early. Decides to go ahead and go to bed and pass out. We all go out playing in the garage, have a little campfire going. My sister's husband decides to go back in and use the bathroom. Well, I come walking in about 15 minutes later. He jumped to bed with my passed out girlfriend. Started to do a little touchy feely with her, man. No. Yeah. So I took a baseball bat to his face and just got out of prison. Did two years in prison, man. You really did? In Shelton, yes, I did. Oh I took my. Took a bat to his face. God. She was passed out cold, man. He, and I'm thinking, well, where the hell's he at? You know. So I go wandering in there, thinking maybe he was barfing, doing whatever. You know. I go walking in there, sure enough, he's in the room, in my bed, with my lady, filling her up, man. Now, how did your girl feel about you going to prison for two years? Uh, yeah, she wasn't too thrilled about that. She, she wasn't thrilled about, well, she woke up, and there, I mean, the cops were there, and dude was halfway dead, <laughs> you know. I mean, I feel bad, you know, to a certain extent, but, you know, you know how it is when you've been drinking a little bit, you know. And what got me the most is it was my sister's husband, and he knows how it is, you know? Wow, what did your sister think of that? Uh, I haven't talked to her since it happened. Really? Yep. So did she think it was okay? She should have left well enough alone? Well, so I guess she's still with them. She said, well, as I know, I, I don't have a clue where they went, where he went. I don't know. And your girlfriend, where'd she go? Pardon? Your girl, where'd she go? I don't know where my sister went. Oh, but she did not wait for you to come out of prison, huh? You're breaking up, buddy. I, you know, you're breaking up. Uh, I'm at the radio station. you got a cell phone. Look, uh, your girl uh, the, didn't wait for you to get out of prison, huh? No, she didn't. Oh, boy. She did not wait for me. Okay. But the reason I'm calling is let that be a lesson learned. And I think any guy that goes through that should handle his business the same way I did. Because, you know, I'm free. Yeah, that's right. Get out the baseball bat, crack him in the face. <laughs> 
Go to prison for a couple of years, but make your point. Is that what you're saying? Uh, all right, we're losing you there, but uh, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jody on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jody. Here's my story. Um, about a year or so ago, my cousin was in town. This is somebody who um, my husband and I had done things, gone on vacations with her and her husband several times a year for several years. She comes to town without him. And we're all out drinking, having a good time. There's a big group of us. And she was sitting next to him. She leans over to tell him something, and she's kind of laughing. And she was pretty drunk at the time. I thought she was just telling him a joke or telling him something. She kind of leans over and touches his leg, so I thought. I didn't think anything of it for, you know, the rest of the night. We get home later that night, and he tells me that she grabbed him and said that she was really horny and wanted to have sex with somebody before she went back home to her husband. Uh Uh-huh. So we didn't, I didn't say anything to her. I didn't confront her. We were supposed to go out with him the next night, and um, something happened. I, I, it's not because we didn't call. I, just, I don't remember exactly what happened. But we were supposed to go on vacation with him like a month later. I emailed her and gave her all the details about the hotel and where we were staying and, you know, told her to make her reservations, and um, she never emailed me back. So we went on the trip without him. This has been almost a year ago, and I've tried to contact her you know, a couple times about various things, and she won't return my calls, she won't return my emails, nothing. I think she, you know, just felt stupid enough afterwards. She realized what she did, and it is too embarrassed to confront either one of us. Boy, this stuff is more common than I thought. Yeah. Do you notice how everybody you talk to, nobody talks to the person that it happened to? Yes. Isn't that funny? That includes me. Yeah. When it happened to me. Yeah. The guy just left the kitchen, and uh, I didn't say a word to him. And there were four of us sitting there playing Scrabble, and three of us knew what happened. Right. Right. You know, I don't know if she if she knew that he was going to tell me or if she, you know, if that's why she's not talking to us or if she just realized that, oh, my gosh, I shouldn't have done that, and now I'm so embarrassed and I don't want to talk to him. You know, I, I don't know. And and I don't, you know, I don't know. It's just it's a really weird situation. Jody, thank you for the call. Dumb like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Dumb like it. 1-800-5800-866. I love what you're doing for our young men of America. Yes, it's a public service, as you know. Well, absolutely. The Tom Likas Show. Like it, son, huh? Tom Likas Show on 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio, you and me. Let's say hello here to Doris. Doris, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, do- Hi, Tom. Hi, Doris. How are you? Do you care? I do care. I listen to you every day going home. Thank you. Yeah, I love your show. But I have to call because this has happened to me about four years ago. My husband and I both work at the same place, and we invite his, his boss over to dinner about five, six, seven times. I walk away from my husband, and he's not married. His boss is not married, and he has a girlfriend. And I walk away from the crowd, and we go, I go down the hall. He followed me, and he plants a big one right on me. No. I, I swear, Tom, I slapped the hell, uh, excuse me, I slapped him. I just gave him a good one, and as I slapped him, my husband happened to come around the corner, and he asked, you know, what the is up? So I told him. I came out right up, because my husband and I have been married since we were 17, and I we have a good relationship. Like you say, you should be able to tell your husband anything. That's it. But my husband got so furious, I thought he was going to knock the hell out of this guy, but he didn't. He told him he wasn't welcome in our home anymore. He told him to leave, and he told him to get the heck out. And so he left, and he was really mad. He said, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And my husband, I was so afraid. My husband, I kept saying, what's going to happen tomorrow at work? you got to go back and face this jerk. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, we went back to work. It was cold turkey for us. husband. We both work at the same place, but his boss is not my boss. Mm-hmm. And so I got emails at, at work from him. See me, please, I need to talk to you, which I didn't. Got messages at home from this idiot. On the on the answering machine. Oh, that's good. Leave messages at home. That's good. He left them. I mean, he knows I'm married with my husband, right? So I tell my husband, "What do you want me to do?" And he says, "Just let it go. Let it go." But he wouldn't. Tom, this idiot just kept calling and calling and leaving things on my desk, leaving emails. 
So my husband finally went in and talked to him. And, you know, my wife's telling me, I have copy, I approve, you better leave her alone and all this. Well, he jerk comes into my office closes the door behind him and tells me that he's been looking and watching me since I started. Oh, no, he started again. My God. The Tom Likas Show.